Now, the official Suncoast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. South wind is blowing pretty strong right now. We're looking at the southwest wind at about 17. And with that westerly, southwesterly component to the wind, we're going to see the number, uh, dew point number, start to climb into the 70s later on this afternoon. It's already risen a significant amount, uh, almost 5 degrees over the course of the last few hours, and it will continue to rise. 85 degrees, the current air temperature. We are probably on our way to a temperature that's a few degrees warmer than that. But I tell you what, we're going to cloud up here pretty soon. We already have a little bit of cloud building out there, but we're going to see it cloud up. And when we see it cloud up, um, I think we'll probably put a hold on the temperature. Okay, in a nutshell, here's what's going on. If you kind of trace out the flow of upper level winds, you get an idea of how the jet stream is behaving. Around this kind of river of air aloft, there's little packets of energy that are being pulled along for the ride. And those packets of energy are helping to make the air rise. At the surface, there's plenty of moisture, as we have just seen, and that's helping to support these showers and thunderstorms, these kind of complexes of large-scale masses of thunderstorms that are continuing to kind of lift slowly to the north, but generally to the east. And we have a pretty good line that has formed under a cold front that's wrapped up around a low-pressure area to our north. That cold front extends out into Gulf waters, and while... It kind of looks like the, the, the bottom end of this line is just decaying and falling apart as it gets down here. And that's because the radar beam doesn't see out that far so well. Um, one way to look at this and look at the strength of these storms is to overlay the lightning strikes. And if we do that, you see really how far out the lightning strikes extend. And in fact, if we could even detect further than that, it would go further out into Gulf waters. So there's a pretty good chance that we'll see some thunderstorm activity as this line inches closer. And if you just extrapolate on how far it's come and how the motion uh, of the forward motion of this whole line of storms, you can figure about six hours before it touches base with us. So uh, figure around between six and nine o'clock, we'll have this line of storms getting closer to us and moving on through. Some of them have some rotation in some of the cells, which doesn't really necessarily suggest tornadoes, but does suggest some pretty good, strong thunderstorm activity. Luckily, we don't have a whole lot going on now. We may pick up a shower or two in inland areas, but that's not the significant rainfall. The significant rainfall comes with these lines of showers coming southward. The front sinks south, and we get two kind of distinct lines of showers moving through. First one this evening, and then the second one probably tomorrow morning as well. Um, both of them have the potential of producing some pretty strong storms with gusty winds and hail. Tonight, increasing cloud cover, breezy winds with gusts as high as 25 miles per hour, possibly. And then storms, of course, lousy boating weather. I don't have to tell you that. With those storms approaching, the winds are going to get kind of gusty. The first one arrives on our doorstep, uh, say, between 6 and 9 o'clock. Probably around 8 o'clock, we'll get it pretty close to the shoreline. And then the second one arrives, and I think the second one now might be a little bit weaker, coming through tomorrow morning. Um, I had thought it was going to be just the other way around, but it does look like that first line of storms might take some of the energy out of the atmosphere. In any event, we'll have a strong wind out of the northwest after those storms pass by, and that will draw down some cooler, drier air that'll uh, really be very pleasant as we head into the weekend. So there's the Storm Prediction Center's idea of what might occur, and the, certainly the risk zone extends even further south than it did before. That's for a marginal risk, about a 5% chance of uh, severe thunderstorms, not for tornadoes. The tornadoes really aren't in the forecast considering the structure of the winds aloft, but certainly some gusty winds. There's some cool pool, cold pools of air aloft that could help support some very gusty winds, downdraft winds in some of the storms. Now we need the rain. Obviously the fire danger index still high in areas that have seen some heavy rainfall. The fire index is great. It's low, but in our area it's still in the high zone. And hopefully these two lines of showers coming through will allow everyone a chance at seeing some rainfall. And the rainfall totals could be significant, a half an inch to an inch wide spread and then in some pockets maybe exceeding two inches so that would be nice we'll look for a 60 percent chance of evening showers and then again tomorrow morning a 60 percent chance of showers clearing kind of early tomorrow 
in terms of uh, stronger storms and then just maybe a, a, a smattering of cloud that might contain a little drizzle for the first half of the day. Clearing second half of the day. And the weekend looks fantastic. Back to you, Scott.